Everybody like watches. Well, I really believe that. Even if many don't wear watches, especially the young generation, or they wear those things that hardly passes as watches. I am referring here to the fashion like watches and I will not give any names. Or they wear smart watches thinking they are cool, which they are not. And this being said, did anyone ask himself why the leaders of the world, from politicians to bankers and rich people in general, they all have at their wrist traditional watches, I mean mechanical, right? Watches are lovely because they are quite artistic in addition to having a very useful function, which is to tell the time. Even with the modern advancements, a watch movement still needs a lot of technology. However, because of the sophisticated and alluring engineering that goes into watch movements, even people who are not enthusiasts find themselves captivated by them. On the other hand, displaying the time has always inspired a good degree of creativity and expressive flair. A watch in general and its movement and dial in particular are both considered works of art due to their exquisite craftsmanship and imaginative designs. This is a feature of timepieces that I adore, even though I'm by no means artistic. Even their mass-produced watches, such as those from Swatch, Casio Timex or Seiko, to the more priced Rolex and Omega, have well thought out design and expression of style. Overall, I think that one of the key things that attracts me to watches is the fusion of engineering and art, and even though there are many simple watches on the market, the subtle elements such as the color of the dial, the indices, the form of the hands and the case shape are very well considered while creating a watch. The reason some watches work so well, in my opinion, is best explained by the art idea of proportion. No matter what color, size, price or even the name on the dial, proportions quietly reveal whether a watch is attractive or not. Let me give you just one example. Is this watch attractive? I would say no, despite it's from a brand that wiped the floor with Rolex. I think you already catch my idea. I will try to describe the relationship between timepieces and various proportional principles that are significant to consider. I am no expert, but I own a lot of watches and even I have seen and handled watches from the big three to the Q and Q and everything in between. So I say with confidence that I've seen a greater range of watches and brands and proportion appears to be the clear answer. When I realize that and when you will realize that, it will be hard to unsee it. Proportion refers to how items are arranged in relation to one another within a certain scale. When having a conversation about timepieces, regardless of the overall size of the case or dial, try to think about how the parts relate to one another. Is the dial size fit to the watch face in general? Does the bezel appear too wide? Does the thickness of the watch make it appear larger? Does the size of the text alter in proportion to the dial size? For example, the Glycine Subcombat has a case diameter of 42 mm, so it's not a big watch by any standard. But because it is so slim at around 11 mm thickness and the face of the watch being so flat, now couple all that with the skinny long hands and overall impression that there is too much dial space makes the watch too seems as it is of 44 or 45 mm case diameter at the wrist. It is all an illusion, of course, but this is the case with the proportions. No wonder the Rolex Submariner, it is the best. Its proportions are the best in relation to each other, from the overall case diameter to its thickness to the size of the dial itself and the bezel thickness. Some watches had either skinny bezels or thick cases or busy dials and so on. And the overall impression, when all these elements are added up, will not make for the most appealing watch to look at or having it at the wrist. To find the right proportions to make the watch attractive in its overall look, it is an art. 
no wonder Rolex and I come back to this example again, it is the best out there. However, this hasn't always been the case. For example, the Rolex Explorer, which had hands that many thought were too little and too small, was a victim of this idea. Proportions are all about relative between different components as much as size. There are exceptions, of course, but these are few and not relevant in the grand scheme of things. Conclusion is that one can decide which styles like the most because different styles may have different effects on the final design. I believe that a good design need to achieve balance. Given the restricted amount of dial area, features should be given equal weight to ensure understanding without overemphasizing any one aspect. After all, when come to watches, it's hard to reinvent the wheel, but if you want to go all in original design, you may very well end up with this watch. Not a pleasant experience having this at the wrist. This means, in other words, having relatively hefty hands and indexes that are neither too thin nor thick, legible lettering that is not overly noticeable and so on. The total size also conveys proportion. It should not be too large or thin, nor it should be too small or thick like a hockey puck. It should also have a respectable thickness to case diameter ratio. Some watches I like very much, but they miss the overall ratio that makes them to be a definitive acquisition in my collection. For example, is the Seiko Sumo, a beautiful diver's watch, but it comes with a 45mm skis diameter, which I personally hate. Same for IWC, a great Swiss watchmaker. They have some aqua timer models on the larger size. That's why I had to sell my IWC Ingenieur double split chronograph. It had a case at 45mm diameter, which again is too much for my taste. But this doesn't mean the watch is flowed by design. Maybe it's only me, maybe I am the one that I have a problem with in this context. Just have a look at the high-end Swiss luxury brands that really know how to use the art of proportions. Both Rolex and Tudor have worked very hard to select a font type that is easily readable, distinctive and identifiable. These all have an impact on the watch overall dimensions and, in turn, how visually pleasing a particular reference is relative to another. Let me give you an example. Again, I refer to Rolex because there is a reason Rolex is the greatest and most sought-after brand. Their watches, despite not being the best in the industry, are the most desirable and nobody complain about, at least when it comes to overall design. Rolex Explorer, upon closer inspection, show details like as the minute hand reaching up to the minute track. We also see that the minute track around the periphery pushes the indices inwards. This is done just enough to guarantee that, despite their smaller size, the indices balance the dial. Without this minute track, the indices would likely be too small, giving too much dial space. The text is positioned so that it balances the logo and is neither too high nor too low. So you see this is a very good example of what proportion means because this is an art to make the watch to be pleasantful to the eye. But let's go up and select some watches that are over the Rolex because standard proportion is not limited to simple watches. It also features heavily in more complex designs like in FP Journe Centigraph and the Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch. Even though the FP Journe Centigraph has one of the busiest looks on any dial on the market, Journe's attention to typeface and proportion makes it aesthetically pleasant. The hand's weight, relative text size and finely calibrated subdial symmetry all contribute to a sense of harmony. Let's move on, the Moon's watch is one of the most famous watch designs and its balance contributes to its appeal. Similar to the Centigraph, the Moon watch design is symmetrical. The sub-dials are exactly sized within the dial, and the text fits the upper part of the watch in a way that balances the sub-dials. The dial is thoughtfully designed, and this includes the indices and minute markings. Standard proportion is intended to produce a natural look that complements both simple and complex designs. The right ratio are needed for a watch to look appealing and well-balanced. 
These explain how the complex timepieces like Centigraph looks so natural and effortless. But altered proportion can be equally pleasant, like the Alange and Zone. There is nothing symmetric on the dial, but it just looks great. Which emphasize how one element of a design can be changed or made more prominent in relation to its overall size. This asymmetric design highlights a particular issue by causing the balance to shift towards or away from the altered area. The concept is used in a variety of ways to draw attention or away from specific components. The subdials are balanced and precise, and the writing on each subdial is sized correctly to blend in with the surrounding dial. It's the first thing that naturally grabs your attention, and you can focus on how attentively everything else is arranged until you've processed it. The uniqueness of watches, like art in general, is what makes them so fascinating. This implies that a timepiece need not to be harmful just because it deviates from accepted standards of proportionality. When creating a watch, there are a number of factors to take into account. The outward appearance of the watch, including the color scheme, band, style and size, receives a lot of attention, but proportion is one of the elements that frequently get overlooked. Even if the color or style of the watch doesn't appeal to you, proportion is what gives it a proper appearance. This is the secret, in my opinion, to tapping into the subconscious of a person when it comes to design, not just for watches, but for anything in general. Well, every principle has a distinct methodology and can be found in numerous timepieces. The ideal proportion relies on your own inclination. I believe that viewing timepieces from an artistic perspective will open your eyes to new possibilities when considering a design. I find it difficult to examine a new watch without taking proportion into consideration because I have grown to understand its importance.